All right, guys, in this video, we are going to continue going through Angular Unit Testing Guide. And in this particular video, we're going to look at the section with components, testing components with async services. Now, I don't think much of this par uh, part of the guide m make much sense here because um, what, what they're so the section title is about co testing components with async services. However, if you scroll through it, you'll see how they're demonstrating how your component might be using a service with an async um, method, right? And here what they're doing, uh, they're demonstrating how a component is using this get quote method from the service and it's supposed to be returning observable, which is asynchronous thing. And here they're enhancing this capability of uh, using some more observable things. They're catching error and so that inside of catching error, they're doing some timeout, uh, set timeout stuff. Now, if you look further then here, they say you're testing uh, how you can test things with a spy, how you can create a spied version of the service that you are using in your component. And then once you have the spy, you can create uh, spies on the methods of that service and have it return observables uh, as they would normally, but you just return mocked um, values of these observables. All right, so how does this relate to testing asynchronous services or rather testing components that use asynchronous services? I'm not quite sure because what it demonstrates is that Whenever you're using a service in your component, you should uh, create, you should spy, you should create mocks of those services and mock their returns. And when you mock their returns, you just have it return an immediate observable, which is not an asynchronous operation. There's no waiting. Everything executes after a single uh, detect changes run, as you could see right here. Now, yeah, these sections say that if you do that, then your test just becomes synchronous and you don't need to worry about it. Where the real value in this section is where you see fake async stuff. That's where it is very useful when you have some asynchronous stuff going on in your component. Very, the simplest example is having some set timeout with some time, like one second, you need your component to wait for one second before running some other stuff, but you need to test what happens after running that some other stuff. That's where you need to use this fake async and tick uh, constructs from Angular testing. And that has nothing to do with services really. That's for any kind of asynchronous operation. And the fact that in your component, when your component is using a service that has some asynchronous stuff in there, you're mocking that service anyway. So, and when you're mocking it, you're turning all its method, all its methods to be synchronous, to immediately return stuff instead of waiting for, then it doesn't make any sense to deal with asynchronous services in your component. You just mock them and they become synchronous. Uh, now where the value here is in uh, fake async stuff is when your um, component is using some timeout stuff. Now let's let's demonstrate that. Let's skip all the all the mood here about um, a services being asynchronous. It doesn't matter because you mock them anyway. Uh, now let's simulate a scenario in the test, or rather in our component. We have this component one. And let's say some of that functionality is being asynchronous. Let's see, we have this get my string method that returns whatever service get text returns and concatenates it with this string. And then it's being used right here in the template to output that string. Super simple. And then we have a test where we let that run concatenate the string and we assert that inside of that div 
we see that string that returns is returned from a service, but in our case, the service is stubbed. All right, so there's nothing asynchronous from the service going on at all. Uh, and then that's what we assert against. And everything's working here. Let me actually double check that tests are passing and they are all right. Now, what we're going to do is we we're going to introduce some asynchronicity, uh, if that's the way you could say it. But one way to introduce asynchronous operation in your component is to use set timeout. And you would have to use it from time to time for, for whatever reason. There's going to be some delay before your code is being executed and you can assert against that. So how can we use that set timeout? Let's say, hmm. All right, so I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to declare a property. I'm going to declare public property. I'll call it text. And then for, um, I'm not even going to initialize any value to it, but then I have this my string method that I'm going to call actually, well, let me update this method. I'm going to comment out that and then instead of, you know what? No, I'm not, forget about my string method. Let's comment the whole thing out. In ng on init, instead, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to use set timeout. And the first argument in set timeout is the function that's going to be executed once the timeout occurs. And the second argument is how long your timeout is supposed to be. And in this case, let's have it one second. And once that timeout executes, we'll say that uh, the text property, what it's supposed to be, we'll use the same kind of calculation here from the my get my string method. So what's going to happen here when component initializes right here, it will run set timeout. It will wait for one second and then it will execute this body of the function that will set the value of the text property to be the concatenation of whatever get text is returned from the service and then this string here. Yeah, what I expect, well actually let's update our template to use that property. So the property is text just like this. And then let's update our test to well, actually, I don't think we need to be updating anything. Uh, it's still the text property. You see the nice thing about uh, asserting against uh, the elements in the template instead of asserting against running any particular methods in uh, in the components, you can refactor your component to whatever the way the things are being calculated and displayed here. And as long as you're querying against what's inside of these developments, uh, your test will never break. So that's a nice thing. However, here we're doing some asynchronous stuff. And I expect that this is still the proper way to assert against uh, what's inside of the div, but it's going to be, f it should fail because the test asserts that immediately without waiting for one second. And it looks appropriately right now where it, we, we expect it to be this string, but there's nothing in there because one second is not passed yet when this assertion is executed, therefore it fails. Now that's where the fake async and tick magic comes from this guide uh, where they tell you how to test this kind of thing. Although for whatever reason, they put that inside of a section with testing a component with an async service, even though it has nothing to do with services being async. All right, so let's now see the example. How you use fake async function is you wrap your main testing function into that fake async function. And then when you want to have some time pass, you use this tick function in there. So let's do the same kind of refactoring to our test. Let's say fake async. I'm going to use this auto suggestion from VS code where it 
suggest to import the correct thing. So that's fake async. And I make sure that I wrap my testing function into that fake async function. All right, now nothing is highlighted. It looks correct. Let's check fake async import up top that VS Code made for me conveniently. So everything looks correct here. And just wrapping it in fake async is not sufficient. You also need to run the stick function that's also available. Well, first one, you see it's auto suggesting me an incorrect thing. Something comes from the renderer three. So I don't think that's that. If I pick the next one, that's the correct one. So I import that function. You can see it showing up on top too. Uh, and I execute that. And that's how I make the time pass during my tests right here. Uh, this set timeout function should execute, but I don't think it's quite going to pass yet. Let's double check. See that it okay, it still fails, still with the same failing assertion that it expects our string to be there, but it's not there. And the thing is that here I'm setting this timeout to wait for one whole second before the body of the function executes. And now uh what what happens during the test here when I run tick, it only flushes um I'm not sure if how it exactly works with the amount of time, but it slash, uh, flushes one instance of a time. And it would have worked if I had my set timeout function to be uh, zero like this, it would have worked. But if I use some kind of absolute numbers here as one second, what I need to do is have a tick execute and simulate that it's at least one second has passed. And then um, I should see th uh, the body of that set timeout function should execute and I should see my assertion passing. So let's, let's see if that's sufficient to pass exactly one second and it's not. However, so you saw that, that the test still fails, right? Let's try to do it one second and one millisecond. Is that going to be sufficient? Or maybe I'm doing something wrong here or that's not sufficient and uh, maybe I'm doing something's wrong. Maybe I need to run detect changes after this. Let's see. Yeah, let's, let's give that a try. Still didn't work. Okay, so I'm going to move back, detect changes, and then I'm going to check out this here. So what I'm going to do when you get some kind of weird behavior in the test that you can't explain, you're, you're certain that this must execute. What I'm going to do is to put a console log statement and I'll just say set timeout like this. So when this pops in the, in the console, I'll know that for sure my function has executed and it did look at that. So I can know for sure that this line was executed. But somehow in my test, when I assert against that, it's not there. So what could that be? Um, all right, so let's, let's do the following. Let's add another console log statement right before our assertion. And let's say before assertion. All right, so I'm going to see if this console log statement shows up after I see the console log statement that indicates that the set, set timeout is executed. Therefore, I'll know for sure if, uh, if this function runs right before my assertion or it some, somehow runs after that. Okay, so I see that the set timeout ran and then after that I am asserting. So it must be, so the test must work, but somehow it doesn't. So I'm not quite sure why it doesn't. Maybe I need, let me, let me try another detect changes uh, trick here. 
unless I'm missing something really obvious, which I don't see. Okay, let's try it again. All right, still failing in the same way, but let me do this a little bit over the board and set it for two seconds, maybe one second and one millisecond is not enough. No, that's not that. It's still failing with the same, with the same thing. But now I don't see my console log statements at all, so that's weird. I should see this and... Oh wait, no, when, when I run before, when I run detect changes, that instantiates ng on init, that runs ng on init. So I'm still not quite sure why this isn't passing, but uh, the fact that I moved detect changes to be after the tick, it makes console log statements disappear is a little bit puzzling for me. So I'm just going to resave that and let it run one more time. And that just gets stuck. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to kill this test session and restart it. Oh, actually, look at this. It says that one timer is still in queue. That means I didn't, I didn't finish it or something. So let me let me put back the detect changes statement here, and let it run again. See what comes up. All right now, it doesn't complain about. Uh, what was the error? It was talking about timers in queue. Right? Yeah, I think what we have here is is the proper way of doing it, but why the test is not passing? That is so bizarre. Let me let me do another um, detect changes run here right before the assertion. You know what? I think that's going to do it. That's the yep. That did it and that's because first you run detect changes and that triggers ng on init function and sets the timeout function and then you run the tick function and passing two seconds which is definitely enough for the set timeout to pass and execute the body of the function and once you execute the body of the function it sets this property but then if you don't run um, detect changes, the template never updates, even though the text property was updated in the body of set timeout. So that solves the mystery. And this is something I should have remembered. Now I remember that I actually encountered this problem many times before, but I just forgot. But yeah, this is something you learn during fake async stuff. All right, this was a little bit long and, and took a little bit to figure it out, but I hope it was useful. See you guys next time.